to just give you an example, we are looking at an AR1 model. Here, let's just look at the heat transfer from a body to its surrounding, and basically assuming that it's just conduction, and then it's just a first order differential equation with some insulation layer, and then you have a temperature difference. Let's assume that the surrounding temperature is zero, then we have a very simple equation here with a solution that I guess you've all seen before, just the exponential function from initial state. If we discretize this to get into discrete time, well, basically we have this model here. In practice, you will often have some noise on top of that because you have some fluctuations or whatever. So basically what we end up here is a model that is an AR1 model. Now, in practice, when you observe temperatures, you are often not observing the temperature of the body directly, but you have it indirectly, and thereby you also add some noise. So let's look back at this model here. Let's first just simulate it. Let's make a thousand values, identify some numeric first, and then just run, start with a one, whatever, and then we just see what happens from there. We simulate the process here, sorry, and then what we do is that we add observation noise after we simulate the process. So there's no feedback in this model. At the top here, we have the data, and we see that the process seems to be stationary. It oscillates with a lot of noise. So what has been done here is to calculate the sample autocorrelation and the sample partial autocorrelation function. And the question is now, can you identify which model is actually being used here? So what do we see? We see an exponential part up here. Well, we did start out with an AR1 model. So it's no surprise that we see an exponential decay up here corresponding to an autoregressive part. And we also see that in this partial autocorrelation function we have in lag 1, we have a very significant contribution. And that's also very well corresponding with the AR1 part. But we also have something in lag 2 here, which should not be there. So what is this model? Is this another exponential, or is it actually an AR2 model? Let's just look into it. Let's think of it for a second. Basically, what we have is that we have a, a system. Let's just write it up for consistency. Who we have, and I'll, rather than using temperatures, I will just write xt equals some parameter phi x t minus 1 plus epsilon t. And then what we have as well is the observation noise. So what we observe is y t equals to x t plus, and I'll just use e t as the observation noise down here. Now, what we'll do then is look at y t and try to insert x t. So what we get here is that y t is equal to what we have up here. So that's phi x t minus 1 plus epsilon t plus e t. Now let's look at what we have internally here. x t minus 1, what is that equal to? Let's look at what we have up here and see, well, we can take it from there. So we have yt equals phi, and then xt minus 1 here is equal to yt minus 1 minus et minus 1. And then I need to plus the epsilon t there, and I have to add the et out there. So rewriting this, what we have is that yt is equal to phi y t minus 1. And then we have a, let's collect the time same out here first. Then we have plus epsilon t plus e t. And then we're skipping, uh, missing this part here, this minus phi e t minus 1. So what we do have here is an AR1 part 
and then we have something that resembles an MA1 part that is comes from a contribution of two different noise signals where there is an MA part for one and not for the other. And that's also why you get this diff here. That's for the MA part that gives you that scaling. So that's just w one, yet another example of how things could be done. To round off, basically, most important thing is we can take any armor model and write it in a state space form, and we can use the Kalman filter both to estimate here when we have missing parameters, but also to do predictions. And we can do the maximum likelihood estimation as we've done many times before. And we can again compare models using likelihood to find which one is the better model. And at the end of the day, what we care about is to find the model that is most useful for whatever system or problem that we're trying to solve.